What's up guys and welcome to another installment of Software Sunday. Today we're going to be taking a look at another operating system that aims to bring Android to the desktop just like Remix OS. Some of you probably already know what I'm talking about because I mentioned it in my last video. Today I'm going to be trying out Phoenix OS. Now in this video, I'm going to try really, really, really hard not to make too many comparisons between Remix OS and Phoenix OS because it's been nearly a month since I've tested out Remix OS and I'm sure they have made some critical updates since then. Uh, I was lacking a couple things including support for the Play Store and there are a couple of really small bugs here and there uh, that got on my nerves. But overall, Remix OS was a pretty good little operating system uh, and I did that I think two software some days ago. If you want to check out that video, the link will be in the description. So go ahead and check it out if you're interested. Yeah, but once again, I don't want to compare the old version of Remix OS with the current version of Phoenix OS. That just really doesn't seem fair. There's a month gap in there, uh, and that's a lot of time for improvements, especially uh, with these two operating systems, which are relatively new. So today I'm going to take a first look approach to Phoenix OS. That means I have not tested it out yet, haven't even installed it to a USB flash drive yet. So that's the first thing that we are going to do with Remix OS. All I had to do was download one little package. I had the ISO and the installer in it. I extracted it, and from there I just ran the installer and it did everything for me, put Remix OS on the flash drive. I plugged it in, changed the boot options, didn't really have to play with any other things in the BIOS, uh, and it just works. So we will see if it is that easy to get Phoenix OS up and running. Hopefully it is. Uh, once again, I have no idea yet. I tried to do a little bit of research on Phoenix OS beforehand. It seems like uh, there's not much out there on it. I mean, with Remix OS, it was like all right there. There's a ton of articles, uh, a bunch of stuff. You know, they had a lot of stuff on their website and the Phoenix OS website was kind of blank. They had like one PDF, uh, but it wasn't really telling me anything. Uh, so I was kind of disappointed with that. So with this, it seems like we're just going to have to jump right in. I uh, don't really have anything beforehand for you guys. So the, the laptop that I'm going to be using today to test Phoenix OS out on is the Dell Inspiron 3521 that I used with Remix OS. This thing's rocking a dual core Intel Celeron processor running at, I think, Think 2 gigahertz, uh, has 64-bit processor inside, integrated Intel graphics, uh, DDR3 memory running at 1600 megahertz. We have 8 gigabytes of that. And really, I think that's... Uh those are all the relevant specs. So let's go ahead and move over to the screencast and see how easy it is to install Phoenix OS to a flash drive. Welcome to the screencast. And I just realized I've already broken my golden rule when it comes to not talking about Remix OS. I mentioned it and in the installation process and I'll probably mention it again a couple times in this video. I'll just try not to bash it too hard. Let's go ahead and grab Phoenix OS. Go to your search engine and just type in Phoenix OS. It should be the first or second thing that pops up. So I'm gonna go ahead and type it in now. I'm using Google if you couldn't tell. <laughs> Go ahead and go to the Phoenix OS website and you can see that I was already doing some research. I read the little pudding article, but for me, there just wasn't enough information in there. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna have to uh, get down and dirty and actually go into the operating system. So go ahead and click on the website link. Uh, and if we actually, uh, this is the download page, but if we go to their actual website, you can see that, you know, there's there's really nothing here. They have the home page and the download page and you can request the brochure, which I'll go ahead and do. And you can see that the brochure is really nice and pretty. It, it, it's really sleek and, you know, there's some information in here, but it's just not enough. It wasn't really anything, you know, super interesting for me. Um, yeah, the thing that uh, probably interested me the most was all the way at the bottom. And to me, I'm going to make that comparison to Remix OS again, but, you know, this thing looks a lot like Remix OS. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And it says that you have access to, like, hundred or, or a million apps and I'm assuming that Google Play Store must work on this then for them to have access to that many apps they're probably using uh, utilizing the Google Play Store so I'm gonna stop rambling on this I'm gonna go back and we're gonna go ahead and hit the downloads page which we were just on and we're gonna download the installer 
Okay, so you can see that they have a version for ARM and a version for x86 processors. We want the x86 version because we are running that on that Dell Inspire on laptop with the 64-bit processor. It says it will work on 32 and 64-bit systems, which is different from Remix OS, which would only work on 64-bit systems, which was kind of a bummer because if you want to use it on something small like a, like a netbook, which in my opinion is what this would be ideal for, you can. And it's kind of frustrating that they would do something like that. Maybe they changed that. I could be wrong. Uh, once again, it has been a month since I've tested it out. I haven't even visited their website, uh, but when I used it, it was only compatible with 64-bit operating system. So we're going to go down here and download the beta installer. I'm just going to wait for it to go to my downloads directory. Well, that's kind of disappointing. I left for 30 minutes because the download was taking forever and I came back and according to Chrome, the download has failed. So let's try this again. It is trial number three and it has failed once again. So if I ever manage to download this, I'm probably gonna host it on my personal server so you guys don't have to go through all this trouble. I believe they are a team based in China, so the server might be in China. I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, but either way, wherever it is, the service is pretty bad. So let's see if we can even get this to download. I was finally able to successfully download the file using, of all things, Internet Explorer. So I think I'm going to go ahead and throw it up on my web server. Not really sure what's going on with that, so I'm going to put it up there just in case uh, uh, something's going on with their servers and you guys can't download it. Uh, but if you're watching this like a year from now, you're probably going to want to go onto their website and grab the newest version. Alright, so I finally have my hands on the installer. I went ahead and just downloaded it to my desktop to make things easier. I have my 30 gigabyte flash drive plugged in at the moment. This is the exact same flash drive we used for Remix OS. So let's go ahead and see how easy it is to install Phoenix OS to a flash drive. And I can't remember if Remix OS uh, had an ISO and an installer or the installer was like bundled all in one little package like it is right here. Uh, I'll go ahead and throw in an annotation in to uh, correct myself because I'm not really sure. I can't recall off the top of my head right now, but I'm going to go ahead and run the Phoenix OS installer. Okay, so this one gives you the option to install to a hard drive too. I don't recall Remix OS doing that. And a lot of people were asking me about that and I wasn't really sure uh, because I hadn't done it in practice yet. So it looks like with this, you could actually uh, install it to your hard drive. All right, we want to write to USB flash drive. I want to use flash drive E. Let's go ahead and write it to that disk. Just finished already, ah! Okay, so Phoenix OS is finally installed to my USB flash drive. Let's go ahead and see how this works. I'm gonna go ahead and plug the flash drive in and we're gonna turn the system on and select to boot from the USB device. I believe with this computer, it should be F12 to get into the boot options. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit USB storage device. And well, we don't really have any other options. So let's go with Phoenix OS. Right now, I'm not even sure if the operating system is going to make it to the desktop because I started this process at 11.14 and it is now almost 11.54. So it's either a very, very, very lengthy first boot time or it's just never gonna make it to the desktop at all. In the meantime, I got really bored. So I decided to do a couple other things during this video. I'm gonna head over here. I have a couple of flash drives plugged in and I am installing Phoenix OS on them as we speak because I want to test out if this operating system is actually capable of running on 32-bit processors. That's what it said on their website, uh, but I want to test it out myself because as you remember, Remix OS was not capable of running on 32-bit processors, and I really want to see if this operating system is. So let's go in the back over here and grab a laptop that has a 32-bit processor. Um, I'm trying to think of one that Android x86 actually worked on pretty well, and uh, this Dell Inspiron right here did the job with that. So let's try this one out first. Just gonna bring it over here, and we'll see if we can get Phoenix OS to come up on this laptop while I'm also waiting for it to boot up on this laptop. So uh, trying to do two things at once here since I'm getting kind of bored. I went full circle and came all the way back around to my Dell Inspiron 600M. I tried out my Latitude, I tried out a Pentium 4 machine in the back, both rocking 32-bit processors. I tried forcing PAE on this machine because PAE is not supported. 
and nothing seems to work. So, you know, my conclusion is that Phoenix OS will not work on a system which has a 32-bit processor. If anyone has gotten Phoenix OS up and running on the system with a 32-bit processor, I would love to hear about it in the comment section. But as far as my testing is concerned, it will not work with a 32-bit processor, unfortunately. It is currently 12.12 and Phoenix OS still has not made it to the desktop, so I'm gonna go with plan B now because this is taking way, way, way too long. I don't think it's ever going to make it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and migrate over here and try to boot Phoenix OS on my desktop system. I'm surrounded by Phoenix OS failure right now and it's driving me crazy. First impressions are not great. Uh, we'll see if we can actually get it to boot up. I'm not sure how much of this I'm actually going to cut out. I think a lot of it needs to be left in. Um, it, this is not fun, not fun at all. Ah, one of the computers has finally made it past the boot process. We are almost there. I'm gonna have to select a, well, I'm assuming this is select a language now. I had to pull out my Asus G75 gaming PC to get anywhere. I never ever used this thing, but I thought, what the heck, might as well try it out. Um, and it is the first one, if not the only one, to make it past that boot screen. So let's go ahead and see what's going on here. Um, hopefully there's a, oh, there we go. There's the option for English. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. I should probably move everything over so I can start using the mic and tripod again. All right, so hopefully audio is a little bit better now. I have the camera mic'd and I have the camera on the tripod as well. So you shouldn't be moving around everywhere. Let's go ahead and hit next. Searching for Wi-Fi networks. I'm going to go ahead and connect to my Wi-Fi network. Okay, so that's great. It looks like the operating system detected the system's Wi-Fi adapter and we are ready to go as far as wireless connectivity is concerned. So next again, input your username. Let's just go with uh, something temporary. AA cat would be great. A computers and technology, finish. After a few hours, we have finally made it to the desktop. Let me go ahead and read off the system specifications of this machine real quick so you guys know what we are working with. Uh, this is an Asus G75 gaming PC. I have a quad core i7 in here running at, I believe, around 2.5 gigahertz. I have 12 gigabytes of DDR3 in here running at 1600 megahertz. And then I have a NVIDIA GeForce GTX 660M with 2 gigabytes of dedicated VRAM. Now that the operating system is finally up and running, I can give you guys my first impression. So first off, the desktop looks really nice, really sleek, just like Remix OS. It's kind of weird that the backdrop is just black. Not really sure if there's supposed to be an image there or not. Let's go ahead and start playing around with the operating system itself and checking out some of the applications installed on this thing. Once again, I have not messed around with anything, so this is the first time I am using anything on this OS. So I'm going to go down to the bottom left corner, which looks like some sort of menu. I'm going to pop that open. Okay, so we have power options right here. Settings, that's pretty self-explanatory. Help fall back. Uh, what's that? Okay, so it just takes us to a help page on their website, which is uh, not in English, by the way. Let's go ahead and pop over here. Security, just giving us some security options from the settings. Computer, that should give us access to the drives and files on this system, and it sure does. Uh, the internet browser is right here. Let's pop that open. I'm not really sure. Oh, you know what? I checked this out on their website and I'm pretty sure this browser is based off Chrome and it looks like it's based off Chrome. They have a bunch of uh, uh, odd uh, looking websites down in the uh, recommended websites panel. And I think this thing actually ships with Adblock. But yeah, this is a slightly modified version of Chrome. Let's go ahead and just try to use it. I'm gonna navigate to YouTube. So www.youtube.com. There we go, that's uh, actually pretty fast, pretty snappy. I'm just gonna navigate to one of my videos. Currently, the system is having issues playing back YouTube videos, so I'm gonna come back to this at a later time to check out what's going on with that. I wanna uh, take a look at some of the other applications on this system first. Don't wanna waste too much time with this. And yes, the system did just crash because I was messing around and trying to get a, a wallpaper on the back because the black screen was annoying me, but the system just crashed when I tried to do that, so definitely not gonna try to do that again. What in the world is this icon? Oh, okay, so that's just bringing up our file system. This looks like some kind of email client. Yep, it sure is. Uh, not sure what this is. Okay, this is just a uh, office application. So I'm gonna go ahead and click start. All right, so let's just go ahead and create a new document. How about just a uh, Word document? 
use the blank template. And there we go. Let's just try typing something the usual. Hello, YouTube generic phrase. Hello. Oh, okay. There we go. YouTube. All right. So I'm not really sure how to use this uh, office application. Okay. So if I highlight that and then just try to change the font and make it larger, uh, that cut off like half the word right there. It's wow. All right. I, I guess that's, that's kind of working. Huh? Is that just because of the font? What if I change the font to something else? Uh, okay, this is the most confusing word processor I have. There, there we go. There we go. So uh, it works for the most part. That was kind of uh, kind of interesting to use. Let's go ahead and back out of this. No, I don't want to say that. Um, okay, so go back. Oh my god, I'm going to have to do a whole bunch of cutting during this section of the video because I'm just lost as far as this operating system goes. And I'm gonna go ahead and pop open the spreadsheet. There we go. And uh, let's just try typing something in here. Hello. <laughs> All right, that works just fine. Not really gonna play with these uh, too much because they are kind of throwing me off here. And it is a bit slow to be honest. Uh, especially on a machine of this caliber. I'm not sure if it's utilizing all the hardware on this as far as uh, RAM is concerned and all the cores of the CPU, but uh, it still shouldn't be this slow. Okay, I'm just gonna close out of this. That's not working very well. Settings, I mean, I just expect it to be the general settings. Yeah, and it's a really nice layout too. Pretty easy to navigate here. Uh, not gonna play around with that too much because we can all see that and we all know what settings are in the Android settings. It's pretty much the same thing. Uh, we have a sidebar right here. I think I already went over all these indicators. We have battery indicator, Wi-Fi, sound. So that's all good. It actually brings up a whole new window, which is kind of annoying. You you would think it would just bring up a small little box right here that would give you a notification. But no, we're going to throw up a whole big window in your face. It's not bad. It's not bad. I'm just, just saying it's kind of a weird way to uh, do things. So what if I want to actually download some applications? How do I go about doing that? What is this? Okay, so this looks like some sort of store, and it's not in English. Oh, what? No, what? How do, what? I'm so lost. Okay, this operating system has, uh, has blown my mind today. How do I change the language? I'm looking for something that looks like it would be settings so I can change the language on this, if you can change the language at all. Uh, I, I'm assuming this is their store, which has over a million apps on it. What in the world is this? I cannot find the settings. There has to be some way to install the Google Play APK on this because I do not want to use this store. I have no clue what I'm doing here and I cannot find anything that resembles settings to change the language. Oh my God. All right, close out that. Let's try to install the Google Play Store. Stardust isn't responding. Do you want to close it? Uh, okay, let's open you again and can we navigate to Google to find a Google Play APK that will work with this? I'm not getting anything. I am not getting anything. I'm going to break a second camera out in a minute so you guys can see my reactions to this. This is killing me. I mean, it's not a bad operating system. Definitely not a bad operating system. But some some of the applications it ships with just aren't there yet. It's, it's freezing up all over the place. And it's probably just with the system configuration. But gosh, this is this is frustrating. Extremely frustrating. Okay, it looks like I'm getting something now. So, go, 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 no, nope, 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 come on. Okay, so have not been very successful so far. I tried to get Google Play services up and running. I tried just installing the APK and then I realized I had to install the services with it. So I tried using the uh, package from the Remix OS um, uh, service installer and it did not work. I didn't expect it to work, but I just gave it a try. Uh, so I'm gonna have to keep uh, trying different stuff with that. And I got Chrome installed and Chrome will open, but for some reason I cannot connect to anything using Chrome. So <laughs> there's some uh, configuration things I probably have to mess with in there. Yeah, this is this is taking a pretty long time and uh, someone already woke up. Oh my goodness, you're killing me. Someone already woke up, so I'm gonna have to uh, tend to that first before I mess with this anymore. So uh, while we're taking this break, what do you think of uh, Phoenix OS so far? Hmm? You think the uh, desktop integration is pretty good, but some of the stock applications are uh, not really there yet? Yeah, it's been frustrating. Yeah, this is a nice break. Yeah, yeah, it's been frustrating, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, Baba, Baba doesn't really like that. You know, it's not, it's not fun trying to configure everything. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you're gonna eat that. 
Mm. So uh, do, we, do you even think it's worth, you know, trying to put in the time to install these applications to get up and running? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, we should probably do that, yes. Yeah, you're not gonna, no? Do I have an answer for Baba? Yeah, that's a yes. Yeah, we, we should probably put some more time into that. We'll see, we'll see. You know, pretty sleek looking environment. It's pretty snappy for the most part. You know, some applications lock up, but. Uh, yeah, cheese, time for cheese. Yeah, but we'll, we'll power on and see how it works out, right? Yeah. All right, so we are back and the computer actually fell asleep. I tried to get it to come back on and the whole thing just crashed. So sleep mode is a no-go on here, just like with Remix OS, sleep mode didn't work very well either. Uh, so we're booting back up and we are going to try to get everything up and running again. If I can't get the Play Store working, I'm gonna try to install some sort of APKs uh, such as Angry Birds and so on uh, to actually gauge the performance of this and check out if they will actually work. So I cannot get Google Play services to install success Successfully, which means in conjunction with that the Google Play Store and Chrome will not work I tried to get Firefox up and running Firefox would not start up either So I'm stuck using their crappy built-in browser which all of a sudden decided to start working now Which I guess is okay then I was able to install a couple different applications So we're gonna go ahead and check those out and I'm going to talk about the system a little bit more because uh, A lot of this video has just been paint drying and I know some of you are probably getting bored So I'm gonna try to move away from that and we're actually gonna start taking a more in-depth look at this before this, I had a couple applications open and multitasking was just fine. But now every time I try to demo it, and yes, I have restarted the system several times, uh, I have a couple applications open and the whole thing just locks up. So I really want to praise it for its, for its multitasking capability. But unfortunately, you know, if it just keeps locking up and crashing, I don't know if I can. It, it is capable of multitasking, so that's a plus, but it crashes every once in a while and it's kind of annoying. It's not really stable. So I'll show you that it is capable of multitasking and maybe it won't crash during this demo. I'm gonna go ahead and pop open the file manager. Why not an instance of the internet browser? Let's try to open up the word processor at the same time. So you can see so far so good, but at some point, at some point, I feel like everything's just gonna come crashing down because it usually does. I'm gonna pop open the start menu. Why don't we try running a game? Yes, I have installed some games on here. And by the way, uh, I have Angry Birds and Jetpack Joyride and I'll post both of those APKs up on my website so you know, uh, so you can get the exact version that you know is gonna work with this exact version of Phoenix OS. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop open Angry Birds. Come on, it worked before, there we go. And, oh, no, you're kidding me. It was working earlier and now, now we lost it. Now we lost Angry Birds. Oh man, that's frustrating because I had it up and running perfectly fine and it was, it was actually really smooth, really good gameplay and now, you know, God, now it just froze. Okay, maybe I'll try to open it without uh, demoing the multitasking at the same time. Alright, so let's give this a second go. I'm gonna go ahead and pop open Angry Birds once again, and I, I'm telling the truth, it did work at one point, so let's see if it'll work this time. Just gonna give it a second. There we go. Come on. Okay, and I swore last time it actually went full screen, but I guess not. Maybe I'm just imagining things. I didn't actually get that part on camera. I wish I did, so I could have confirmed that, but let's go ahead and play. And as you can see, I already did level 1. Let's go ahead and move up to level 2. And as you can see, everything's actually pretty smooth. Gameplay's nice. Everything looks really nice. There's no weird uh, color distortion or weird pixelation or anything like that. Everything's working just fine. So let's go ahead and uh, knock all these over. Oh, wow. Well, I never claimed to be uh, any good at this game. So give me a break there. Oh. And there you go. One level has been complete. I think I'll try one more and then I'll leave it at that because, you know, eventually it's going to get really boring. So let's go ahead and see if we can't get this one with only one bird. Oh, come on. Yes. Oh, really? Oh, that's disappointing. Man. I'm telling you guys, I was totally robbed. I should have gotten that. You know what? Let's go ahead and demo that multitasking capability some more. You know, because you can have multiple games open. At the same time, let's go ahead and open up Jetpack Joyride and hopefully it doesn't cause the uh, system to crash. There we go. And you can see this one actually does go full screen. Oh no, okay. Alright, I thought I was going to freeze there. I, uh, I was holding my breath for a second. 
Yeah, but very smooth, nice gameplay, no problems at all. And I'll show you how to get out of this in a minute because it took me a while to figure out how to work all this. So uh, I'll try to give you guys a little insight into that. Sweet, and isn't that a great note to end this game on? Okay, so with that done, and game, as I said earlier, gameplay was pretty smooth. There were one or two points where it did lock up for just a second, but besides that, everything worked just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of this, and all I have to do is hit the uh, super key, on, and that brings up the uh, start menu, and of course with that, the menu on the bottom also pops up. That's the best way I found to actually bring up the, uh, the task bar on the bottom. So to actually close applications, you uh, left-click on the application and just hold it and it brings up a small menu go ahead and just hit quit and I can also do that with Angry Birds no it's kind of finicky and I'll just hit quit there you go so we can exit out of those applications just like that now that the games are out of the way let's go ahead and just try to perform some day-to-day -day tasks on this computer let's say I have to write an essay so I'm gonna go ahead and pop open the word processor and with that, uh, I need some synonyms to spice up my work. So I'm going to pop open the internet browser at the same time and just go to thesaurus.com. So www. And I should auto, it should already be in here because I had this demo planned out. There we go. Uh, www.thesaurus.com. And let's say I want a synonym for computer. Not sure how many results that's going to bring up. It actually brought up quite a few, and that was pretty snappy. And then I'll just go over here and start typing up my essay. So uh, computers are great. Yeah, great essay, right? So that's working out just fine. We can have our word processor up over here, have our web browser over here. So let's say we actually need to do some research. So uh, let's just say, hey, I want to know the uh, basic history of computers. So I looked up uh, EDVAC or UNVAC or something like that. I feel like another thing I can't spell come on all right well butchered that acronym but eh, that's all right and so there we go we can go to uh, a Wikipedia article I'll bring that up and I can read all of that good stuff and of course I accidentally clicked on a link but as you can see and of course I can pop open a different tab and uh, do all of that other good stuff and thank goodness it has not crashed yet because I would be really angry if it crashed during this little demonstration uh, I probably would have uh, ended the review there and just walked away and throw my computer across the room. Uh, but now, uh, performance hasn't been too bad. And I'm probably jinxing myself in this next demo. Something's probably bound to go wrong, but hey, so far it's working fine. Now I just want to see where hardware support is sitting at. So I'm going to open up the camera application and let's see if it detects my webcam up here and how easy that is to use. So uh, remember photo locations, I really don't care. I'm not gonna use this that long, so it doesn't really matter. And it appears, I should probably stop doing that, but it appears uh, the application has locked up. So camera isn't responding. Let's wait a couple seconds. All right, so I waited for about a minute and it looks like we're gonna get nowhere with the camera application. So I'm gonna see if I can even close this. I doubt it will close. I'm probably gonna have to end up restarting the system. Oh, maybe I can't quit. All right, so it actually closed out the application, but now according to the system, my webcam is actually still on. So China's watching now, guys. Next, I wanna see if it will detect my USB device, which would be my flash drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that into one of my USB 3.0 ports. And I'm not sure how this works. It might open up a dialog, it might not. I don't think it will. So we're gonna have to go into the file manager, which, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Maximize that. And then hopefully it's under USB storage. And there we go, it is under USB storage, so it is detecting the flash drive, which is plugged into one of the USB ports. Just out of curiosity, I want to try to use their store and see what happens. I mean, it, it looks kind of sketchy and I can't tell what anything is because once again, it's not in English, but uh, uh, let's, let's just try uh, downloading something. And I'm not sure if any of these cost money or maybe that means free. I could probably put this uh, through Google Translator or something like that and what? What does that mean? What does this do? Oh, I've just downloaded all those applications on accident. Oh crap! I didn't want to do that! No! So I'm pretty sure I just agreed to install 22 applications, none of which I know what they do, and my webcam is still on and watching me, so... 
Oh, not really going too well right now. And I can't figure out what's going on with the store. I'm gonna call it with the store. No idea what it's doing. It's not installing any applications. And according to uh, the download manager, you know, we're getting like five kilobytes per second download speed. So it's never gonna happen anyway. Absolutely ridiculous. I'm gonna call it today for this episode of Software Sunday. Thank you guys for sticking all the way through. That was painful. I have a lot of editing to do. I'm going to cut out some of this garbage and hopefully shorten it down to under 10 minutes. Uh, because if it's over 10 minutes, I feel like it's going to end up being really boring. So once again, thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. All the stuff that I downloaded here today will be up on my website. Link will be in the description. And of course, you can check out Remix OS too. I, I have to say, I do prefer Remix OS over this. And I talked about that uh, in the last episode that, you know, something like this would be great for someone like my mom. And in its current state, you know, I would not give this to my mom. It's not stable enough. Um, it's crashing all over the place. Applications aren't installing. I can't get Google services to work. So yeah, it's just it's just not there yet, guys. I'm I'm sorry. I really wanted to like it. You know, I I I liked Remix OS a lot, and this just kind of dropped the ball for me. Not a big fan of it. Uh, you know, if you have your own opinions, you can go ahead and test it out yourself and tell me what you think of it. Uh, I would love to hear what everyone else thinks of it. Maybe this is just an isolated incident with the system hardware, but you know, I'm not uh, not really a big fan of it at this point. So thanks for watching, guys. I know I said that like three times already. I'm losing it at this point. Don't forget to like this video. If you didn't like it, please leave a reason why. Of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can support us by uh, buying stuff through our Amazon affiliate links. It doesn't cost you anything, and we get a small percentage of every purchase. So I will see you in the next installment of A Computers and Technology. So uh, Baba has a lot of editing to do, right? Yeah? Baba has to edit out all, of, uh, all the boring stuff where all the paint's just drying. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a long night trying to get this out.